Thank you, Anthony Jordan, down in the pits. We have had two three-minute stop-go penalties. The 4.48 has exited the pits under red light. Uh, under the red light, so uh, they get a penalty. But the leaders, Paul Dickinson was speaking to Dan Blake a bit earlier on, they have been pinged for a three-minute stop-go for well, refueling regulations breach. Well, the former leaders, of course, Team Celeve, so... Yeah. Three minutes, and the other car which had that uh, red light infringement, that was Team Rockingham. So that's Team Rockingham's car having issues there as it's uh, as it's uh, basically has not respected the, the red lights at the end of the pit lane. It might also be the fact that they've also gone out. That uh, might have been potentially under the safety car when the, when the pack was going past. Yeah. And, uh, and that's all because when they do that under the safety car, that they do tend to close the end of the pit lane to stop anyone from rejoining him, mixing up in, in, in the queue of cars. Um, more three abreast action. I can see they've got the, the, the Alex and Holmes car battling with the 374. That's the Starskin Hutch inspired machine. Also, more battles here up the inside. That is the 395 that's in there as well. So, plenty of uh, side by side action on the exit of Stowe Corner down towards Vale. And down into the complex where they go once again. So, more of, the, more of our, uh, our, our resilient C1s heading down towards Abbey. It's one of the GMP developments. Stand up for cancer cars. It's 387 battling with 385. And the sister GMP development stand up to cancer car with Howden Haynes behind the wheel is now up into the top 20 back again. 18th position. Last tour from Haddon was a 3 minute 9.1, so very consistent. Um, showing there. Roll centre at the moment with uh, Stinton behind the wheel. Currently in the pits, now in 11th position. Um, so we have over 17 hours completed just over uh, just under six uh, just under seven to go here at silverstone for the district o parts distribution c1 racing club 24 hours of silverstone don't forget for to find out further information on the championship it's c1racing.club that'll give you all the information also uh, give you uh, ideas of you know the championship rounds the invitationals you can go to which includes scotland which even includes continental europe and uh, gives you ideas of um, you know, you, you have to buy certain parts through uh, the, the the championship itself, such as the wheels, the tyres, that kind of thing. Uh, but for three and a half thousand pounds, you know, not including entry fees, you can build a full-blown Citroen C1 racing car. Yeah, I'm just watching just uh, on this lap at the moment. I think we're looking at the uh, the, the Attack racing squad now. It's Joe Wiggin at the wheel, who's a currently former Compact Cup competitor, and that could campaign in this year's. Mazda X5 Championship and his first couple of weekends has already picked up a couple of podiums for his troubles. Look at this gaggle being uh, behind the Starsky and Hutch tribute band here. Um, just This is just immense. I mean, I, I can't really get, I still can't get my head around how many cars we still have circulating. 88, mm. well, depending on obviously with what's happening with Majestic Motorsports, uh, one of their two cars, the 421 that's... Uh, Definitely not got a very well radiator. Oh, two cars off. That's the 400. That's dangerous. Oh, Shree, shouldn't be getting out of your car when it's still a live circuit. Goodness me. But the 400 is off, and that's right in the middle of the exit of Brooklyn's Corner between Brooklyn's and Luffield. That is a, that is a safety car written all over it. That, yeah, that, at, at least, because that is the two cars in a very dangerous position. Uh, I, uh, the, the driver has done well to get out of the car, although obviously with a live circuit, probably not the brightest thing to do, but... Uh, and the driver from the 400 sort of looks to be slightly windy. Yeah, I think without question that's got to be a safety car because those cars are right in the middle of the road on the exit of Brooklyn's Corner. Well, the 400, that's got uh, Tarling behind it. That was uh, Tarling behind the wheel of that one. Yeah, that's TCS Motorsport. Is that, is that Richard Tarling? Yeah, Richard Tarling was behind the wheel of that I car. I think that's, if I'm correct, that's the, um, that's the for, no, former Ford racer. Safety car has been deployed then. And the other car that's involved, well, it's difficult to see because there's no number on the rear window, unfortunately. Um, it might be possibly... No, I can't tell from that one. It's, it, the, the first number is definitely a three, but in terms of the other two, again, apologies, we can't quite tell from that angle. No, it's so. either... It's, it's, the, the, the strange thing is, uh, I don't know whether it's they were trying to overtake or whether there was one trying to unlap themselves because the two cars that surround TCS in terms of the running order is mm. 371 of the Edge Motorsport in 45th, but they're a lap ahead. But then on the same lap, but two minutes and 52 seconds behind, is Exit 13. Yeah. 
You should see there the remnants of the C1 USA carts in the pit lane now. Um, whatever's happened with the 371 in terms of the impact, it's, um, it's certain the front end of that car, I saw it through the windscreen, it was steaming quite a lot. And I don't know if he's even set off one of the airbags as well. Even uh, us have to disconnect them. I'm not 100. percent That's the passenger side airbag. That's yeah, yeah. Been, uh, deployed. It has. Yeah. So that's. And that's a 37 there, and that's definitely not. That's not 371. Hang on. I'm just keeping an eye on who's dropped down the order now. There is. Is that 378? Young at heart, maybe. That that it, it does look like an eight on the side of that window. That could. Uh, now these. Now, I think you're right, it could be 378. So Young at Heart were running 37th position. And they were two laps ahead of TCS Motorsport. So that's the biggest sort of, well, I mean, that's the biggest collision I think we've had um, in terms of on-track activity, let alone uh, the rolls. But the main thing is both drivers are out of the vehicles, passenger side airbag deployed on what looks, looks to be um, following, you know, hopefully awaiting confirmation that's the 378. Mm. But the, the good thing is that both drivers have walked away, got out of the cars. So safety car, the C3 Aircross safety car being deployed. And good to see that the drivers are absolutely fine. They're having a discussion, nothing heated. It's Clubman, Mo it's Grassroots Motorsport. Um, we, we are pro race, is the passenger okay? Mm. Well, um, the thing is, is that in, in terms of you know the, the the racing regulations that the C1 Racing Club employs, you know they are using a bona fide non-airbag uh, steering wheel on these cars. But obviously, from a safety perspective, you know they can't go tink. You know the, 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 there'll be regulations that will state that you cannot disconnect certain functions on these vehicles. So if mm. the cars have ABS, traction control, deployable airbags. Obviously, not uh, the steering uh, wheel notwithstanding. And yes, it is. It is the 378 that was involved. So, the 378 of uh, Young at Heart and TCS Motorsports are the two that came together. Yeah. So, Richard Tarling, he's the uh, much renowned Formula Ford racer. Yeah, that was the back car, and in terms of the 471, was it? No, sorry, sorry, uh, uh, three, 378. 378, my point, I've got the wrong car. 378, that was I think Malcolm Harding, the wheel of that car. So Richard Tarling and Malcolm Harding have come together. So safety car still circulating here at the home of British Motor Racing Silverstone. With Circuit Pro, Harrison continues to lead by two laps as we now have 17 hours and 6 minutes elapsed here at Silverstone with 6 hours and 51 left to go. And Scott, is it me or is the sunshine trying to burst its way through the clouds at the moment? Well, not trying, it has. You can see it definitely is much brighter on the pit straight now. There's a definitive shadow underneath the, uh, the, 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 the bridge on the back straight. Ambient air temperature around here at Silverstone is 11 degrees Celsius. Real fill of around about sort of 7, so... The wind looks to have died down ever so slightly, um, and yeah, it's uh, this is going to be a significant clear-up operation. Um, so, and the the, the twos are uh, the two cars, 400 and 378, are basically uh, attached by the door hinges, so to speak. Um, and there is some fluid I can see a little. I can see a little bit of fluid by the right-hand side of the 378 of Young at Heart. Mm. I think that 3378 is still still steaming away at the front as well. So that's one to look out for. So cool and loss from that particular vehicle. I can't really see anything from the front of the 400, but uh, yeah, that's a nasty bit of impact. The the left front, the left door on the uh, 378 of Young at Heart, uh, very much warped. Uh, beyond standard specification. So, with this in mind, Roll Center in the pits again with Stinton behind the wheel. They're currently 17th. Uh, Viking in the pits now as well from 11th position. And that is with uh, Paul Tompkins uh, now in the pits. So, uh, 6,000, uh, well, just under 6,050 minutes of the uh, District O Parts Distribution C1 Racing Club, 24 hours of Silverstone. 88, well, it's going to be 86 cars, I think, now, if those two mm. are confirmed retirees of the 99 strong that started.
this race uh, the uh, biggest single make grid globally mm. 99 cars just one off the magic 100 because of course Citroen celebrates its centenary this year um, and to be honest with you I think it's uh, ah, now Mark Wallace just put up an interesting thing article 16.4 the passenger airbag must be completely removed hmm interesting that might see uh, hold on when retaining the standard steering wheel, the explosive charge must remove completely to disable the airbag, but retain the function. I think that's going to possibly need a bit of a trip to the uh, clerk of the course with that one. Uh, going to go back down to Anthony Jordan in the pit lane. He's found another driver down there to have a chat to you. So, Anthony, who have you got? We're down in the pit lane, down all the way down at 12C. We've got Ryan Cole here for the C1 USA team. How's the car been uh, out there? Boy, I tell you, I uh, had the incredible misfortune uh, to be the first person to roll a car at this race. And from what I understand, there's been uh, 11 more after me. So I'm a little bit of a trendsetter in that respect. And unfortunately, uh, you know, that sort of thing does happen. And uh, I'm glad to say that I didn't take anybody else off track with me. It was uh, completely pilot error. And uh, anyway, our cars uh, since then suffered a pretty major shunt. Uh, we had uh, a couple of guys that ended up driving one of our drivers off the track, pushed him into a wall, and uh, we had some pretty major damage on our front left side. We've got all that repaired and uh, cars back out on track. We've still got, uh, what, in excess of six or seven hours. So we're remaining hopeful. We, uh, you know, keep working our way up and then uh, have an unfortunate incident. And, but that's what's to be expected, I suppose, for a 24 hour. Well, yeah, exactly. And I say, with the amount of safety cars that we've had so far during the race, um, you're trying to get back up those positions, of course, when the green flags eventually come out. We think we're still under safety car at the moment. So, yeah, so it's just come back out again of another car on its roof. So it seems to be uh, the favorite thing for these cars to do. Yeah, and a trendsetter. And I, uh, I apologize to ev for everyone involved for uh, being that guy, but I was the first. And so there's some uh, small consolation in that, I guess. <laughs> uh, exactly that, but the team still seems in high spirits. Obviously, your car's just gone back out, and uh, they were all uh, chanting yeah, earlier. We are. We've got a uh, excellent group of mechanics. Uh, they're really, you know, they've been up all night, helping out, working out, uh, taking care of us, and uh, great find. You know, you're going to see that uh, all up and down the track. You know, and it's one of the things I really enjoy about this series, is uh, you know, we needed some spare parts. People came together, helped us out. We're helping out wherever we can, and uh, more so than anything else that I've been involved with motorsport. Uh, that is the one thing that uh, I really appreciate about this series. It's just the sense of camaraderie, and everybody here seems to be uh, friendly, you know, up until the point where we get out on the track. But uh, <laughs> the rest, the red mist yeah. descends. Yeah, yeah, in indeed. So, but uh, it's been a great experience. Glad to be here. Uh, I started with the C1 series back in 2016, and uh, it's been an incredible ride uh, since then. And uh, just uh, really glad to be part of this, and uh, super stoked to be here at Silverstone. It's been a great run. And uh, despite all the, uh, the side events that we've had, uh, really enjoying ourselves. No, excellent stuff. Best of luck for the rest of the race. We hope you see you get the checker flag. Right, thank you Spot much. on. Cheers. Thank you. Ryan Kell there uh, for C uh, Citroen C1 USA. Thank you very much, Anthony. Uh, down there with Ryan Cullen from uh, Team USA. Um, I think we've been corrected on the safety car. It might be the Citroen C5 air cross, but I uh, can't really see as the... Uh, 378 in the 400 now back on some uh, trailers so they have been handed the uh, customary three lap assistance penalty uh, so and uh, yeah Scott there's a bit of debris and it looks like they have put down some uh, quick dry mix to uh, help clear up the coolant that was spewing from the front of the uh, the front of the 378. Oh dear, and that's uh, and the 400 is not looking very pretty oh, after that incident. Just saw the front end sweep past the uh, sweep past the camera, and uh, <laughs> as a customary as a pitch, pit lane shot with someone on their mobile phone. <laughs> yeah, just uh, checking the live timing and making keeping up to date. But uh, this is what this, we're getting to that later stage in the race where sort of a lot of tired drivers, a lot of tired cars, a lot of tired teams, but doing uh, quite a lot to. Uh, Oh, interestingly enough, Scott, Harrison has pitted from the lead. Right, so race leaders then are in. Simon Harrison has brought the 385 car into pit lane. I don't know if we can, if, it, if our camera's close enough to see that in action. I'm not sure, but um, good to see how that car's getting. Of course, Simon Harrison is sharing that car with his old 
Persia BTCC teammate from Nice95, Patrick Watts, and also, I believe, also Tim Hartland, who is the reigning 16 valve class champion in the Mark II class of the uh, the uh, uh, TK Coupling Production GTIs. There is our um, race leaders. Looking a very dirty white, I might add. This, uh, as uh, we're going to have find out who is the driver in this car now. I'll change over That's in a second. Tim Hartland. Tim so Hartland Tim... now behind the wheel of the uh, 385, which rejoins. So it's a slightly different car, of course. It's still front-wheel drive, but not just not as powerful as his, if, it, if it is him. His regular uh, Mark II Golf that he normally races, of course. That um, a bit of a tricky start to the season. Uh, when he starts the season, and uh, my car just refitting his helmet there for a second. There, just kind of just readjusting it a little bit. Uh, yeah, that was Richard Grindrod from Viking in the 419. Uh, currently sitting in 11th position. So at the moment, the top 10 with 6 hours, 43 minutes and 50 seconds on the clock. Tim Hartland in now uh, in the uh, wheel, behind the wheel of the 385 from Circuit Pro. Jem Hepworth still remains behind the wheel of the 480 from Team Merlin International. Burgess in the 376 is uh, third for Citron Racing. MSAR Old Hat Motorsport with uh, keeping behind the wheel of the 321 in fourth with Mac Attack Racing with Wigan behind the wheel. Uh, in the 347. It's clever use the, the tractor here, sort of the circuit vehicle, to try and sweep the the, the cement dust away as much as possible to try and dry it out. That's a good use there from the uh, from one of the course vehicles. And I think possibly, again, great efficient work by the recovery teams of the marshals to get both those cars quickly loaded up onto the onto the uh, onto the flatbed uh, onto the flatbed trucks. Get them off the circuit and get and get the actual circuit itself cleaned up of any uh, fluid or uh, any other sort of uh, like coolants or oils, maybe oils. Yeah, on the circuit. So great job by all of them. I think possibly we could be we could be in, in getting ourselves into a position where we could even start to get ourselves racing again within the next sort of even lap or two. Is uh, the uh, <laughs> there's some nice backwards driving there from the uh, from the recovery vehicle. So the pack makes its way down the hangar straight. Again, we've had the pit stop for our race leaders, 385. Their car is uh, rather being all silver. It's pretty much all white. I think it's the blankest car out there in terms of not having any other graphics or logos on it, apart from the mandatory um, Distrigo uh, windscreen strip. Yep. Distrigo Parts Distribution, who are backing the 2019 C1 Racing Series. Just been some more conversation in the comments about the... The situation with the airbag, of course, but we did see, I'm sure, the, 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 the passenger airbag go off on the 378, and the regulations apparently do state, regulation 14.1, and also article 16, um, no, 14.1, the airbag firing mechanism should be disabled, Re regulation 16.R, passenger airbag completely removed. So, that, they may have more to answer for that rather than just the incident. They may have possibly have to have a word with the, the clerk of the course and the stewards if that's a contravention of that regulation. Very true there, Scott. 72% of the time has been completed here at the home of British Motorsport Silverstone. Yep, we are nearing three quarters distance. Crikey. But what a race it's been so far, of course. And we still, what a race we've still got to go. We've still got, of course, over six and a half hours still to go in this race, which is incredible. And that's, you get regular, we get the regular sprint races, which is something like two, three hours, etc. So that's effectively either, the, obviously, three two hour races or two, or two three hour races, obviously. So now. I'm seeing very something very significant here, Scott, because from second to fourth, the gaps as a result of the safety car have been truncated. Um, it was 13.7 seconds between Citron Racing in third and Team Merlin International in second, and then the gap between Citron in third and MSAR Old Hat Motorsport in fourth is 16 seconds. So this is allowing for the, the for these three who are on the same lap, nevertheless. Could we see something very exciting happen here if Citron and MSAR close up on Team Merlin? Well, the, the main factor is they've got to try and pick their way through the traffic, depending on where they are on the road. So uh, that might be the sort of the gaps at this point in time. But th those gaps might be might be sort of uh, c uh, populated by the fact that you've got sort of drivers out there. Uh, Anthony, um, Anthony Jordan has got another interview down in the pit lane. So let's head cross down to our pit lane reporter and see what he has for us down on pit road. Anthony, what do you have for us? We're here at the Emacs pit and it's Byron's birthday today and he's here at the 24 hour. Byron, what's it like to have your birthday on such a big race? Uh, 
I don't know, it's exciting, really, but I just want our cars to do well, and uh, hopefully they all come home. We've got four, so hopefully we can get them all back by the end of the race. And how busy have you been? I understand a couple of your cars have been over. What sort of work level has been there in your garage? Uh, it's been constant, really. We've had two cars roll, so we've been working through the night and all day, really, so it's been really, really busy. Uh, I also believe your team have a message for you as well as it's your birthday. We'll, we'll let them... Uh, We'll let them do it. Go on. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Brian. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday! <laughs> and there we go. A birthday celebration down here at Emacs. Thank you very much, Mr. Dan Blake. See, I, this, this, this <laughs> trade for race has everything, doesn't it? it Even birthday singing and celebrations. We, and that's the second birthday that we've celebrated this weekend. Yes. Uh, meanwhile, uh, racing's back underway now. Green flag is out here back at Silverstone. We're just six hours and 38 minutes still to go then. Turning their way into the uh, Magus Beckers S's. Again, under power once again. We saw... We use the term a lot, safety cars breed safety cars, and of course these guys all being so close together, it can prompt another incident, as we have seen previously. We've, we've had one incident being cleared up, they've lasted for two or three laps, and because they're so close together, another yeah. one happens in quick succession. So that could be one of the things to watch out for as they head down the pit back straight. Four Look at um, this. And someone also hitting the grass coming out uh, coming down the uh, coming out of the corner. That's that's nearly that is four to five abreast there in the mid part of the screen at the moment heading down and the cracking thing is we've got what about six or seven battles happening at once we head down towards Stowe Corner it is ugh, just three abreast of the turn it's almost four abreast we've got the Citron racing team I think we're in the middle of that it might be one of the um, atomic racing cars that's still going I think they might be still off the road oh Aero Motorsport, Aero Aero Motorsport in, off the in road the barriers, in the barriers that's, a, that's Luke Handley at the wheel Aero Motorsport and what do we say safety cars can bring safety cars look he's, he's taken quite a journey off the road but Luke Hanley brings the 384 car back up, so he should be okay. He might bring that back into the into the pit lane for a quick. I think that's probably, uh, you know what they say, discretion is the better part of Valor. And if you have a front-end in, uh, incident, uh, as, uh, well, the 303 going very slowly, that looks to have picked up some damage on the left uh, side of that car. So, and he just, I think, did he just lose it? It looks that, that that's going into Baggett's and Beckett, so... Kofi Beckett's is quite a high speed corner anyway. If he's either possibly touched the curb or lost the back end, either way, uh, he has nudged the barrier. It's just we've got a couple of marshals down there just taking a look at the barrier to make sure if it requires any work or not. I don't think it does visibly by the looks of it. But of course, the marshals will have a better judgment of how what state it's in rather than we will from the camera shot we've got here as the marshals continue to uh, converse about the uh, potential damage. But he did take a, fit, a hefty bounce off that uh, barrier. We've got it back going again. So we'll uh, see some more battling going on. I mean, the thing is, is the, the grass is going to be still very, very wet and very damp and very slick. So the minute you lose it, especially going through Maggots and Beckets, um, you're going to find pretty quickly that that speed will not have scrubbed off uh, quite as much as the driver would, would have liked. Um, as the 308, still very heavily battle scarred, um, still... Um, flying its way through traffic in front uh, which includes the likes of the 321 and also the 357 there so still uh, and the at the moment I mean to be honest with you Scott I've just noticed the gap between uh, Team Merlin Citron and MSAR Old Hat Motorsport as Rockingham goes back into the pits between the three cars they are separated by 13 seconds so that's that's going to close up quite a lot. The key thing's going to be who can pick the way through the traffic the most, the, 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 the most efficiently, and then close up yeah. to try and make that gap for second, third, or fourth disappear as they head their way into Maggots and Beckett's again. And it's nearly three abreast. And uh, nice to see that someone's running the Italian Tricolor. We've seen also one of the C ones with the uh, French Tricolor, of course. Yeah, the Italian Tricolor. Uh, that's the car number three nine six. That is the one that's being shared by. Uh, Aldo Ritti and John Stack with uh, Alan and Rory Brown. Similar car scheme they have with their Master MX-5 when they're racing the MX-5 Super Cup. Don't know, but, but Aldo and John both share that car in the championship. Uh, again, they all pour their way onto the back straight down towards the uh, 
complex. It's three abreast again. Look at that. Three abreast again. Then a car in the middle. Then another th three wide scenario into uh, right hander. And because they're so small and so compact, they can go three abreast re relatively easily. Particularly with how much pe um, pace they can keep in the corners and, ha and how, much, how much of a line they can carry on as well. So, Citron are clearly very up for a fight. Very much up for a fight. Last lap was a three minute 4.6. Jem Hepworth a 3 minute 6.7. She's trying to keep it consistent. But the gap now between second and third is 4.483 seconds. And we had this earlier on, of course, with Citron Racing closing down and passing Team Merlin on the road. Uh, whereas now it's happening again, of course. But in that's in between a sequence of pit stops has happened. Citron Racing have stopped by the looks of things and brought themselves back in and, and made, made the And again, made it's the three wide on the international pit straight here with uh, Rusty Nails racing there was on the outside but managed to uh, cut the door off for a 370 which is actually Spy Motorsport currently 13th at the minute see the 43 cooker there there's the Mac attack racing car that's currently south at the moment in fifth position has been as high as second at one point that's got Joe Wiggers at, Wiggers at the wheel <laughs> sorry we don't do requests it's only if the director does <laughs> yeah it's, it, Matt's got insane put, um, put, put my dad's uh, car on the feed 417 please thank you um, it's it's down to the directors which car they pick up rather than us choosing which one they go for to be honest but uh, if you can pick up 417 somewhere then they will try and do so that is the uh, TCS Motorsport with his dad actually behind the wheel 417 79th at the moment we've got three that almost like four abreast into because they will be four abreast get the speed oh. that's going to be very tight indeed and who was that that went round the outside that was the 345 and that was and 345 very quick look down that was the Emacs Motorsport car which was the team we just um, Dan Blake has just spoken to. Uh, with, the, with the most uh, energetic birthday celebration, I think, this weekend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, nice, uh, very interesting comment from uh, Dick Martino. They seem to have a problem with maintaining their windscreens and back screens. Design fault. Well, sorry, this car was conceived in 2005, mate. Um, my apologies. Blame the manufacturer. <laughs> <laughs> Quite possibly. Um, um, Oh, we've had a 3.59 has been issued a three-minute stop-go penalty for pit exit under red, so probably under the last safety car period we had. And that is a set of motorsport. We've also got in the pit lane serving a stop-and-go. Stop it's a 4 4 eight of that's the Team Rockium squad. That was for the refueling breach, I think. Yeah. If so speak correctly. The set of motorsport squad, that's uh, Jim Edwards, of course, father of uh, Jade which is competing at Cleo Cup over at uh, Donovan Park later this weekend. And also Simon Trace, husband of uh, Jade's sister Chloe who just had a, a baby girl uh, just a couple of days ago so congratulations to Simon and Chloe for their, uh, for their, for their successful birth congratulations for their, uh, for, their, for their newborn child and uh, now Scott I've noticed something quite significant the 488 of Roll Centre has been in the pits for a uh, quite a lengthy spell mm. they're now down in 29th position and are about to be overtaken by Kreptek UK in the 367 We've got Bancroft behind the wheel. Yeah, that had an instant at the wheel when it came in. So that was obviously changed over because before that we had the boss himself, Martin Shaw, at the wheel of that car for a while. So we're just fast approaching six and a half hours to go here. Time now has just gone 11 o'clock local time here at Silverstone. So over the course of uh, now, I'm just trying to see... Uh, just picking up some uh, cars coming through and it's quite interesting when you see the the comparison between the the national pit straight and then the international pit straight where so we're based out of the national pit so our commentary box just looks over um, or looks towards the national pit straight as uh, the drivers head out through towards uh, Cops Corner and uh, Matt Scoff uh, Scotting has just said yes dad keep moving up the leaderboards uh, Dick Martino said about the windscreen issues at least no problem with cabin calling but when it's cold, uh, not a... Uh, it's really funny when we say something and then someone takes it completely the wrong way. Look at the top comment. Uh, but I'm just going to ignore it. But uh, yeah, we're saying improved aerodynamics. Yep, I mean, it does provide a good channel. But obviously when uh, when Anthony was uh, speaking with uh, one, of the, one of the guys downstairs, he said, yep, it is cold. There is a lot of racing air coming through that cabin at a huge race of knots. Um, update on 488 uh, has just been requested, which I believe is...
488. I'm trying to remember the, the team name of the cost. Um, sorry. So 488, which is uh, Roll Centre. I think we just mentioned them anyway. So Roll Centre is still in the pits, 29th position at the moment. So. Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, we've still got just under six and a half hours of this race to go. Plenty of uh, twists and turns, I think, I, I can de very much say with the amount that we've had over the last uh, 17 and a half hours. So uh, as we fast approach uh, three quarters race distance, uh, well, race time elapsed here at Silverstone. at the moment with the uh, top 15 well there has been a change Citron Racing have now re overtaken again Team Merlin International for what is effectively second so Tim Hartland still leading for Circuit Pro in the 385 Burgess in uh, Citron Racing 376 in second ahead of Jem Hepworth from Team Merlin International MSAR Hold Hat Motorsport in fourth in the 321 Mac Attack Racing still running in the top five in fifth position ahead of Tollbar Racing ASR in seventh with Callum Cripps behind the wheel. Silver Lake Racing, Bianco Auto Developments and Alex and Holmes completing the top ten with Emax Motorsport 345 in eleventh. Ahead of Cockwomble in the 420. 370 of Spy Motorsport, uh, Scuderia Sundial and Howden Haynes rounds out the top 15 and the 351 GMP Developments stand up to cancer. Chris Morris on the live stream says big shout out to the Castle Coon boys, Old Hat Motorsport and Silver Lake Racing. So, yep. Uh, someone who we know that commentates quite regularly at Castle Coombe is uh, Mr. Chris Dawes, who yes. I think is a duty at Brands Hatch yeah. uh, this weekend. That's for MG Car Club, he's commentating there, so uh, he probably won't be, he's probably going to be deep in, co in commentary right now, so he probably won't be listening. If you just watch this back, then uh, hello, Chris. So. Just been joined up in the comments box by one of the drivers in one of the cars that is uh, sadly no longer circulating, unfortunately. But uh, just been joined by Clayson Kingman up here. He's also sporting his uh, his his uh, Vuel uh, uh, jacket on that side of the things. Uh, I might have probably given the headset for a chat with Alex. I think to see if, he, see if he wants to give us an update on uh, how things have been going. So let's see if we can pass the headset over to, uh, to Clayson if we can. So uh, we spoke in the pit lane uh, before we went off air at 11 o'clock last night, Clayton, that um, you were one of the teams that also had uh, running out of fuel with the uh, 35 litre tanks. They're, they're being put to the test here at Silverstone, aren't they? Yeah, um, that was one of a number of things really from our first stint um, trip to the gravel on lap three. Uh, rather harsh penalty, I think, three laps, but um, that put us way back. And then, yeah, we ran out of fuel. We thought we had a little bit more in there and uh, tried to squeeze too much out of it. So we're not the first and I'm sure there'll still be more with the six and a half hours to go. And in terms of obviously the, the series of events which has caused you guys unfortunately to retire from the race, what was the, what was the main sort of catalyst that caused that to happen? Uh, diplomatically I suppose we could call it a racing incident that's been dealt with by the clerk of the course. Um, it's frustrating but there's a lot of cars out there, a um, lot of varying talents of drivers out there, difficult conditions, um, you know, it's unfortunate we, it's ended our race um, but it is, is what it is, you know, first we've got to finish, unfortunately we haven't and, and hopefully you know, the rest of these cars uh, get to finish but I've just been down to the, the scrutineers Ben, it's looking like a graveyard down there. I think we've had quite a few pictures from Dan Blake a bit earlier on, the two Amigo motorsport cars. Uh, also, Atomic Racing, both entries uh, have also been retired. As we see on the screen, that the Esports and Stars 306 has the tailgate flapping from up high. Um, so that's a quite an interesting uh, aerodynamic trait for that particular vehicle. Um, but will uh, you guys be coming back for more C1 Madness in the, uh, the months to come? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, for us, it's a, it's a new car now. Uh, it's a complete write-off, unfortunately. For me, it's the first first ever C1 race, uh, a bit out of the blue last minute, but the Avantech boys have been brilliant and uh, such an amazing event, such a great grid and lineup, um, so much fun. 
So yeah, we'll certainly be back, hoping to be out at Spa with the with the boys, providing we get another car built in time. Okay, Clayton, thank you very much, and uh, all the very best of luck in uh, what you're doing this season. So, uh, and yeah, let's see if you guys are back for a uh, Spa in, in October. Yeah, everyone loves this Spa, don't they? <laughs> Indeed. Thank you very much, Thanks, Clayton Kingman, Kingman from Mantec. So uh, I think, well, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to head down to the pit, Scott. Thanks okay. for joining me. Uh, potentially, yeah, have a wander down there, see how we get well, on. Well, I'll tell you what, in that case, I will hand over to Anthony Jordan to join you on the microphone. So, Anthony, it's all yours. Good stuff. So we're now heading up, as we say, to six hours, 24 minutes left to go in the uh, Distrigo C1, 24 hours here at Silverstone. So there's some rather unique aerodynamics there being sported by Brendan Lee as Anthony joins me on the, on the microphone. Uh, oh, and there's been contact already just to get onto the microphone. That's between the 359 and I couldn't quite catch the other cars. It comes close to the screen. Might get an idea who exactly who that was that made the contact. Uh, well, first of all, that was a 379, I think, that had the, the, the tag, and that was the, the Elk um, um, Serbro car that had the contact. 359 that's had the tag that got around. That is... Um, There's your replay. So I say Motorsport. Ooh, and I'm not sure if you just sort of got the line one, tried to re re come across again off as he ran wide on the exit of the corner and then got caught up with the, with the Elk Motorsport car just behind him, Anthony. Yeah, not too sure. It just looks like he uh, just ran wide up there. You can see from the tyre marks there, so it looks like on the track uh, he's just he had a bit of a tap there from the 359 as they go round. So it was the 379, I think, that had the spin. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, just like a bit of rear to... Rear to front to rear contact, I yeah, should yeah. say. Um, but what I was about to say is, welcome to the yes, welcome to the show, yeah. because you were down the pit lane. I mean, what's what's the atmosphere down like in the pit lane? For what you've been in there the last sort of hour or so? Down well, there? I can tell you very now. It's uh, it's incredibly cold. Right. Uh, it's very cold. <laughs> it's very uh, windy. Uh, it's very bracing, and the the clouds are looming everywhere. Here's another replay. So yeah, it just looks like the the three five nine there uh, with a little a bit of a love tap there from the 379 as they go um, through. I'm sure they said the motorsport car was at the wheel was thinking, just looking at him, because he was proper 90 degrees side on, mm. looking across at it thinking, what are you doing? In terms mm. of just taking him round. So uh, that was a tag between Elk Motorsport and Assetto Motorsport. So Plenty of action going on at that corner right now. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> uh, everyone, everyone else is on the circuit apart yeah. from this part right here. Yeah, in terms of exactly. Exiting. There is a 24-hour race going on at yes. the moment. There's, ah. the, there's the other car with uh, some dangling debris from the back of it as well. It looks like, uh, I'm going to say that's one of the, um, uh, the registration plate lights, which, of course, is not being used at the moment uh, yeah. for a registration plate. So, yeah, that's dangling off the back of that as well. No, I just spotted it just an exiting shot. I think that was our... Uh, Team battling for third, pl second place. That's so the Team Merlin International car, which um, Hep with the wheel. But the yeah, the top ten. Just to reiterate, it's still in the, in the lead circuit pro racing. With Tim Hartland now at the wheel after having handed over from Simon Harrison and uh, also Patrick Watson. We keep on saying the same thing that it's sort of the nice 95 Peugeot team for British touring cars reunited after what was it 24 years. It's good to see them back together again. Uh, the Adrian Burge and Citron racing in second place, number 376. Team Merlin International in third in car 480. But they're also on the same lap as MSIR Old Hat Motorsport with keeping at the wheel. Uh, Joe Wiggin has got the Mukatak racing car up to fifth position after starting at the back after his qualifying time was disallowed. Started 99th and in some, what was it, almost 17 and a half hours, got up from 99th to the back of the grid yes. up, to fifth, up to fifth, which is at one point they were second, but I think an earlier pit stop has put them back down the order for whether it was a lengthy pit stop or a problem was occurring there. Yeah, that was a, a that was a due to a weight issue, wasn't it? What was it? Four kilos underweight, wasn't it, it by the end of uh, qualifying? It was it? underweight. I think I think the story was they put their lightest driver in, but then didn't realise by doing that, then the car was then underweight. So that was right. then they, I think they sort of lost something like 15 kilos across the session, or whatever it was, yeah. however that worked out. So basically, the clock of the course decided. <laughs> Give them a chocolate bar. Um, so basically decided, right, because of that, you're underweight, obviously you're straight to the back of the grid. And so, th as we keep saying, they get the dubious honour of being, or maybe not so dubious honour, of being the ultimate answer to the ultimate motorsport public question, which is who started the 24 hour race at Silverstone in the, bi the biggest 24 hour race in the Citroën C1 in 2019. The answer is Mech Attack Racing were the ones that did so. so there it is. Back. Uh, we're just watching a couple of the cars there go through turn one cops corner it was uh, the asr 390 of callum cripps out there really pushing the boundaries of that car in terms of track limits as well it was really on the edge of the track there getting as much speed as he can here we look at him now as they go through beckett's uh, there we are so cracking shot from them the car just behind who is that just behind that's that, that's the muck attack squad that's joe wiggin at the wheel so we've got two very capable drivers here joe wiggin of course is a slightly different car than he's used to of course he's driven that car a few times but also when he's not racing that he's 
in the past race BMW Compact Cup and now nowadays races a, a Mazda MX-5 which is obviously rear wheel drive a little bit longer and obviously a little bit lower to the ground and also got about 40 more horsepower and uh, but these two are doing what the leaders did earlier on in the start of the race they're working together uh, down the straight to kind of pull away from the cars behind as much as they can but uh, yeah Callum Cripps is either saying just have a bit of a play with Joe Wigan on track here in terms of these two running those to tail or it's a strategy to try and gain some time here to try and move themselves higher up the order because of course Callum Cripps finds the car in seventh place and Joe Wigan in fifth position so maybe the pair of them are sort of inadvertently working together in tandem to try and pull away from the cars behind and also cut a bigger hole through the air to try and catch the cars around them and make up some time. Yeah, of course. Well, the gap at the moment between uh, the ASR and the toll bar racing, that is sixth and seventh, uh, at the moment is 1 minute 43 seconds. As I say that, it's now um, a lap. So obviously, yes, our, um, the guys in sixth place, toll bar racing, have just crossed the start-finish line. Uh, so we'll see what the gap is when they next cross the line and see if that strategy is working. It was 1.43 this time. We'll see when they cross the line, just see what that gap is. And it looks like, is that potentially raining with that windscreen wiper I see there? Uh, it? it could be. I mean, if you look at our comments box now, there is a absolutely huge black cloud hovering overhead. So I think the rain, which the, the, clear, the, the clearer conditions, which were appearing about half an hour ago or so, appears to be sort of deteriorating a bit more. And it certainly is sort of threatening to rain across here. There might be some leftover sort of... Uh, Storms coming across from Storm Hannah, maybe that's might be, it's been making its way across. There across it is. The continent. And another great big black cloud, and that is around over at the the wing complex as well. So there's a couple of big black clouds around here, which certainly probably might sort of start to precipitate rather imminently. Another large one over the uh, that's at the end of Stowe Corner as well. So I think we are going to get some rain fairly shortly. Looking at the, that site. Well, that should that should. Um potentially spice things up a bit uh, during this race I mean we, we saw treacherous conditions all the way through the night of course that's where the majority of the accidents happened the majority of the safety cars happened and I believe it is raining on the start finish line it is yep you can see spots of rain on the camera there as it uh, uh, spots of rain as uh, or, or, or you can see them visibly on the camera not in terms of the lens but you can see them coming down so we still watch both uh, Callum Cripps now with the wiper going on as he leads the way ahead of Joe Wiggin through Woodcut Corner and onto the pit straight now to end another lap. Yeah, and it is, yeah, it is officially raining. It's uh, it's raining on our uh, window screen here in the comms box, and we're just in the national pit straight there. You can you can't see our window, but yeah, we are there just in front of yeah. you. And you, you can you see can, it visibly yeah, now, and, and it's actually getting harder by the second. Yeah, it looks like a massive downpour actually that's just hitting, and I'm glad that I've just finished my pit lane uh, uh, stint, and I believe it's your turn, isn't it? it, it, so it yeah, it's, get it, your it, coat, get your umbrella, it, 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 get your brolly. In a short while, yes, I'll be heading down. There, so. <laughs> but when it stops uh, raining, <laughs> yeah, when, when it stops raining, I'll be fine. Uh, but no, it's it's it, we, we had this t towards the well, had it basically it was raining most of the night as well last night, which is why some of the circuit is still there's still damp patches around the circuit as the circuit and there's a definitive dry line as well. And it's interesting how these guys are coping with the with the wet conditions. Uh, or, or damp conditions in cars like this when they are so light, particularly when you've got cars as light as this, because of course if you go into a corner too hot, if you just get a small tiny tap when you've got slick conditions, it, it's like how touring cars used to be, they're so light on the rear end that you could almost spin them around with your little finger, that was the joke in terms of being so light on the rear of the car, so literally because they're so small, one small slip and the car can be all over the place. Yeah, uh, back to these uh, guys, you've got ASR and uh, Matak Racing there. Um, or toll bar racing I should say um, now the gap now is 1 minute 36 seconds so they've taken 6 seconds out of them in that lap alone so this strategy they're doing is working of course for 6 hours remaining there's a, a definitely a few more positions there that they've been yeah. gaining so yeah definitely uh, a good strategy playing out here for these two yeah absolutely just think it's done some of the gaps the, the, the gap which we were looking at was the battle that's going on for 2nd, 3rd and 4th mainly because they're all on the same lap together so Citron racing with Burgess at the wheel currently sat in 2nd place then 12 seconds back is the Merlin uh, in Team Merlin International with uh, a further 12 seconds back with Jem, Jem Hepworth at the wheel of that car. And now in fourth place, MSAR Old Hat Motorsport in car number 321. There are further 16 seconds back in fourth position with keeping at the wheel at this point in time. So still plenty of action all the way through the field. And as I say, with 99 cars starting the race itself. Uh, how many cars do you know have we lost now? I this? think we've lost about 11. 11. Uh, potentially 13 because we still have the two cars that went off at... Uh, up at Brooklyn, so the, the two cars come together, 400 and the 378 were sort of in the middle of a track which caused the safety car worship interviewing one of the uh, C1 USA drivers. Uh, as we see, as speaking of which, there is the there, car there, itself, there, there it back is, out, yeah. which is great to see. We, it was in the pit lane for a while. We thought we'd lost it, but the good thing is we got the car back out. Um, and it's, it's, I think, 
to be polite, it, it's, I think to be fair, it's not the most dog-eared car out there because there are a few more which, like that, well, for example. Yes, as I say, the camera really doesn't do that car justice. I stood right next to it as the team were pushing it out. It is knackered. <laughs> <laughs> it is borderline <laughs> destroyed. Uh, the fact it's still going and racing in a 24-hour amazes yeah. me. That just shows the dedication from that team to get this race done, to get to that checkered flag, which is brilliant to see. What's also funny is well, we just saw the eSports and Stars car going out with, uh, I think, several large pieces of black tape on the back of that on the back of the uh, the boot to try and keep it closed as much as possible um, Joseph Bryant says can we hear a shout out for prep set racing one in three cars black with blue stripes and the three neon colors so shout out to them uh, they're sort of up there there's our esports and stars team number 306 you'll see the back here oh big sideways slide you can tell they're pushing in that one but the tape is coming off already on the back of that car that's how windy it is as well it's not just the the rain that's coming down it's the wind here that's been yeah. a factor all the way through the race and i think there was something which i think Callum Cripps was saying to us i think in the video as well or no it was, it was mark Werrell actually at the start before the race um and he was saying to us that because the wind is so strong and because these cars are again are so stripped out they're so light when you break at the end of the straight he was finding effectively the, the car keeps getting pushed in the direction the wind's going yes because the car is so light particularly come at speed so the one time you want it to kind of push you is obviously if you've got a headwind because of course the, the bigger the headwind the, the more it helps you slow down whereas the tailwind yes. it's not to in the gate the braking effect you start to push around. wide yes. so yeah no is and of course I drive a car very similar to this yes you do to, which yes. isn't a Citroen uh, <laughs> it begins with a P and I'm sure you're guessing what it is yeah. Uh, but yeah it's borderline identical and this is how I imagine I look when I drive it on the road right and um, <laughs> unfortunately uh, I have ha got a black box in my car right uh, how can you have a black box in a car like this is that is, is it possible I, I've, I've had a black box and I had a Renault Twingo which is similarly <laughs> sort of a, a slightly bigger car than this so I can sympathise I, I yeah, really can so. exactly but it feels like I'm driving it like how they are so. yeah no absolutely I think, I think <laughs> but, but before my before my twinger let's say before my twinger gave up the ghost I, I was driving it in so many cases like this and uh, and no wonder it needs so much work doing every time it needs to be MOT uh, anyway um, <laughs> moving forward um, I just noticed the in that sort of gang of the cars just the car to the left hand with the black bonnet the, the two white stripes that's our team Merlin international car that's going across in third place and the MSAR old hat motorsport car of, of um, keeping I believe I think it's the white and fluorescent yellow car heading down the back straight. I could have that wrong for a second, but it's just heading down towards the right-hander at Stowe. As we still watch this uh, fantastic on-track battle going on between Callum Cripps and Joe Wiggin. Callum Cripps in the silver and red uh, ASR racing car, and there's Joe Wiggin at the wheel of the Muck Attack racing car, the black car with the uh, pink and yellow car. That, that's their own. That's their team colour scheme because they do run the car in the MX5 championship in exactly the same colour scheme. Ah, okay. the scheme. So um, it's quite one of the more uh, standout cars in, in the championship, shall we say, and in the field at least with this one. Yes. As they head down the pit straight. Uh, still with the wet wipers ablaze as they go down towards Brooklands. I think the rain has actually stopped now. So it's, it's abated somewhat. But it's, 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 it's an on and off. It's, 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 a, it's a slight slight drizzle I think still out there which is uh, sort of causing some, uh, sort of some definite work playing some mental games with the drivers yes oh and there's a man who looks comfortable yeah I wish I looked that comfortable yeah some, some people have uh, worked hard with others by the looks of things <laughs> he's certainly getting his, uh, his, his full, of, full quota of rest as much as he can uh, here's the Alex and Holmes car number 401 that's another squad of Caterham drivers there's more uh, windscreen you can see how dirty as you can see with the back of the 401, how dirty the cars are get because you can see a, a clear sort of yeah clear piece of windscreen where the windscreen wiper has cleared it all the way, but the rest of it is completely filthy on the back of that windscreen. So as uh, <laughs> okay. woken up, so the camera's uh, woken you up by lots of things. So you're still uh, okay. still chilling out in the pit lane. <laughs> He's having fun. Right? <laughs> it looks like oh, they as, uh, as, as they all like, it's that kind of race where you just you get to that point where you just you just, you, you have to keep yourself amused somehow. Well, yeah, so. there you go. So uh, that's working out well for for them. Um, but yeah, the the, the car look at the 401. That's the uh, that's the, Ele the Alex and Holmes team. And also as well, there was they were caught up an incident that we had just sort of brooked at um, Maggots and Beckett's where we had. It was the Manpower Motorsport car and Team Tivoli coming coming together at Brooklands. But that car was right in the middle and almost got caught up as we see uh, 369 of uh, Cock Endurance up the inside line and making a move on the 323. 323, just to remind myself, is Steady 23. That's the Matthew Simonite, James Bansell, Robert Tilly, and Neil Holden machine. Interesting team name that they've gone for there. <laughs> Steady 23. <laughs> No, I definitely wouldn't have gone for that. Now, you were saying about the, the, the weird windscreen with it and how dirty it's getting, obviously, that. So the drivers who have not got any windows, do you reckon they've got an advantage then? 
Uh, well, it, the, what they what they will have is they want they'll be they'll be much colder and also with the wind colder. Springs, yeah, and that as well. What they'll also have is that it's it's going to be interesting because you would have thought that it would be causing a, it won't be as aerodynamic because you've got a massive. For example, the cock uh, cock endurance in the uh, 369 here. They'll have a massive hole of air going all the way through, so that's going to be mm. causing a lot of turbulence, a lot of drag on the inside of the car. That's not going to yes. make it sufficient. Oh, here we <laughs> go, four wide. <laughs> Steady the, on. It's not the first time they've done that. <laughs> um, I, I don't think they're playing for the camera either. We've got the 497 in there as well. We've got the 401 with Lexan Holmes, the 406 in there too. Oh, edged him onto the track. That's Misty Racing being edged onto the outside of the track, but they go two by two instead. Nicely but handled. Yep, we'll get through, but there you go into the heavy braking zone of club and they still look like they're all, as long as they will get on the brakes at the same time we're fine I think we all realise this isn't going to work so no. we're like, <laughs> yeah. one of us has got to back out otherwise this is going to end badly so no. uh, also trying to force away up the inside I think was the uh, I didn't quite catch the the, the the number on the side but there was a silver car with some sort of red graphics on the side that we saw battling amongst it but um, plenty of sort of different scraps going here's our battle that was going on here as it's now been joined by another what four, six, four or five cars including Jem Hepworth in the middle there just flashing the headlights in the 480. That's the Merlin Motorsport car. Ah, uh, in third place, yes. Yeah, here it, uh, it, it, it she comes, flashing the headlights through uh, the right-hander. And it was getting caught up with these back markers that is what saw Jem spin earlier on, up at, up at this corner a few laps ago, which saw her lose the advantage that she had uh, over the uh, over the Citron team, which eventually saw them pass her the first time. So she had a spin and lost her, I think it was about... She had a 15-second lead. She lost about... Uh, must have lost about 10 seconds trying to get herself recovered again so mm. that's one interesting thing well uh, seeing as we're looking at these uh, these two cars again the, the ASR and Mac Attack Racing um, their gap now uh, 1 minute 16 so from 1 minute 40 odd plus uh, odd seconds yeah they've got it down quite considerably so, and, and uh, that's simply just by working together because yeah. uh, what they've realised is they're both running exactly the same pace so rather than try and battle each other just one follows around the other of course it's Callum that has the dubious task of being the one that provides the toe for, uh, for, for, for Joe behind him but obviously Callum's happy to use the clear air and just to enjoy himself and push as hard as he can. And effectively, it's just, a, it's just a him saying to, to, to Joe, right, oh, this is my pace. Cock keep, a rear wheel there. <laughs> keep, 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 keep with it. And certainly Joe is trying his hardest. And I'm sure they're going to have some uh, a, a good laugh bite later on when both have finished their stints because these two really are sort of getting the most out of these C1s and uh, setting some... I think, presume, they're lapping... The, 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 amongst the fastest guys out there on track, I'm presuming, mm. lap time-wise. So they're certainly making the most of it in what is, uh, I think, almost... Uh, well sorted car now here's, here's something interesting they must be listening on the commentary because up the inside goes Joe Wiggin I think Cam's thought right this time you can lead this time because I've had enough of staying in front for several laps I think it's now Joe's turn to, to lead Callum this time and to keep on uh, to keep on extending the gap now and reducing the gap to the cars in front coming up to put a lap on a, another back mark in front towards Vale and Club I think I think Callum's just practicing his slipstreaming for his next uh, adventure in racing. Yes. Uh, which of course Euro NASCAR. So uh, yeah, I think he's just practicing his old slipstreaming yeah. maneuvers. Well, he's already had one round, doesn't he, at uh, Valencia? So yes. he managed to go out there and do that one. There's the Esports and Stars car. I think it's way through, and then they're coming up behind. Can't see the number on that one. It looks like the three one eight. Is it? That's four one four one four one two. That is. It's four one two. Four one two, and that is young and old. So that's the Adam Davy, Adam Alan Breck. Ricky Harding, Daniel Cramporn, Jamie Ingram, and Rich, Rich Ayling uh, car that's uh, currently circulating at the moment. There we go, just behind these guys. So if you can latch onto the back of them, there you go, there's a bit of time you can gain there. So uh, yeah, hook onto the back of those two, there you go, crack on. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, just over six hours remaining of the race. Uh, time of day, nearly half 11. So there you go. So when it gets to half 11, it will be six hours remaining. So there you go. All working well. There's a nice shot there of the 390 with, uh, with the sponsors there on the side. Uh, and the Canon Crips on the inside with this plain white helmet. <laughs> you, can you can tell it's him because he's got his name emblazoned on the back of his yes. hands device. Now this looks official, doesn't it? There you go. Man with a speed gun. No one likes a man with a speed gun. We're not going very fast. No point pointing at us. I think that was, think, <laughs> <laughs> I think that was one of the two um, Silver Lake racing cars that just came into the pit lane for a scheduled stop. Silver Lake Racing. I was trying to find that on the program, but for some reason it's eluded it's, it's by my eyesight for some reason. Uh, 449 and 417 going into combat as they head on to the back straight, and we've got more three wide action down towards this. <laughs> it's the most common phrase of the, of the whole race three abreast or three <laughs> wide. As you see, the Silver Lake car currently having, a, I think, I just completed a rear wheel change by the looks of it. Yeah, that's. Is, that, look, that, look, that car looks relatively unscathed. 
touch, yeah. touch wood. As it stays like that. Actually, quite a few of them, to be fair. Some, some cars just kept out of trouble and got their heads down and gone through. The Vi Team Viking cars in the mix there, the 419 in, the, in there too. Uh, also, as is uh, Team V in there as well. Oh, there's a car pushing it there. That black Citroen... Uh, well, of course, they're all uh, Citroens, aren't they? Uh, that black one <laughs> was just going through there with the Illuminated. Here's tied by side. This is a Majestic. Uh, what is it? No, this, 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 this is the Merlin car. Oh, the Merlin this, car, sorry. This, yeah. this, this is Jem Hepworth in third place overall. Yes. He's just put a lap on a Scuderia Sundial car. Which, that's the Andrew Stacey, Paul Rodderson and Grant Hatfield. Paul Rodderson, well, he's not driving C1. He's out there racing in the uh, the Bark Max 5 Championship in uh, one of his own built Mazda Max 5 Mark 4s, which is quite intriguing to see. And that's... Only championship in the Mazda Mix 5 that actually has them, as we see Team V up the inside of Team Misty. So more side by side actually got Majestic Motorsport battling with Team Viking. And then two cars behind them, 443 and 331. 331 is Bianca. That's not so 431, sorry. 433 and 431. And that was a battle between Brooksby in the 433 and Red Rascal in the 44 um, 431, which is Melchie Motorsport. So um, down into the uh, right hand of Cops Corner, plenty of on track battles going on. Um, I think what I might do actually now at this point in time is uh, allow myself to have a, a very quick break and grab, go and grab my coat and go and have, have an adventure into the pit lane and see what's what, see if we can find some drivers to have a chat to and uh, see what some of the stories are. But so uh, see Jem Hepworth, see if you want. See if you can find another team who's uh, it's one of their drivers' birthdays or something. Or right. or mechanics. See if you can go find another person's birthday. I, I'm, I'm sure me and Alex will certainly try, so <laughs> uh, have, a, have a look. But uh, I'm going to go quickly have a, take a couple of minutes break just before I... Uh, Head down and uh, go and join Alex to see what's going on. We see a bit of a, a, bit of a bit, bit of a snake developing here. That it is, yeah, seven cars just trying to catch the toe as they come down the pit straight. Uh, so, so to hang a straight, sorry. Now down towards Abbey Corner comes a few more cars in the mix. That's one of the prep tech cars in there as well behind uh, 423. But uh, right, I will hand over to Dan Blake. So we'll now have you the very capable hands of uh, Anthony and Dan for this uh, next stint. So I'll uh, bid you farewell for the time being. I'm sure I'll pop up on screen at some point when I've found somebody. But uh, hand it over to Dan and uh, I'm going to head off to the pit lane. So uh, bye for now. Have fun in the pit lane. There we go. Scott Woodward's there heading off. And uh, again, shortly we'll be joined by uh, Dan Blake, who's just, just jumping into the seat. There's a couple of cars there running slightly wide as the uh, exit of Beckett's there on to the, uh, the back straight. They can leave uh, hangar straight. Uh, now, of course, very cold, very windy out there. These cars being massively affected by that. Um, Dan, you joined me in the pit lane as well. You spoke to some of the uh, drivers. Uh, how, how is it out there as well? Yeah, as we saw, everyone's in good spirits. It's coming down to the last quarter of the race now, so they're starting to see the, the finish line getting ever closer. I will say, I know it's on our timing screens, car number 378, the team manager, has been called to the clerk of the course. Ooh so, dear. oh dear, 378 team manager to the clerks, and that's not usually for a cup of tea and a biscuit. No, no, that's never a good thing when they say, oh, you need to come to the steward's office or the clerks uh, of the course, and it's just like, oh yeah, that's fine, yeah, yeah, well, it might be good news. No, it's never good news, never good news. Uh, there's your 480, this is Team Merlin International, uh, Hepworth at the wheel of that one, currently in its second position, 16 seconds down from, um, or no, sorry, uh, 16 seconds ahead of your third place team, MSAR Old Hat Motorsport with keeping at the wheel. So still very close there in terms of uh, podium positions as we look at this uh, trail of five cars going through turn one cops corner and the rest of them following. So uh, still still plenty of action out there uh, with just over six hours to go. But um, rundown of what happened overnight. You were you were here for most of uh, last night. You were awake for most of last night as well, where I was very much asleep. Uh, talk us through what happened. There, there was a lot of safety cars last night. The weather wasn't very nice. There was a lot of heavy rain, and that car we just saw on screen there, the 308, had a bad roll. We spoke to the driver, Daniel Perry, down in the pit lane. That car suffered a lot of damage. There was also, as I say, that Amiga Motorsport 380 car driven by Matthew Dawson, which had a heavy impact into cops. And a lot of cars had problems in, in, in the night time as well. So, and some of them, as we saw in that car graveyard and scrutineering, were very badly damaged, and there's some here. It's a bit of a, uh, a bit of going there, into yeah. Brooklyn's there to get a bit close, but there's some cars which are definitely sort of walking wounded, and there's others which there's just no chance of them coming back out. But there was, I think, a lot of the teams did have problems, and it was the ones who haven't had the problems are the ones we're seeing at the front at the moment. Ones like Team Merlin, MSA Old Hat, Circuit Pro, sort of Mac Attack have done extremely well. This is a team that qualified on pole position, they then lost it due to being underweight and they've come right from the back of the pack to fourth place and there's still a, there's still a chance that car can make the podium as I say we're just now closing in on the three quarter out three quarter race mark as we come down to six hours so that'll be eight pretty much 18 hours 
of racing that we've had and we do now come to that six hour point so we are now